Thousands of Polish women protest against the politics of the populist right-wing government in Warsaw. Fundamental European values are under threat in the country. That includes the rule of law and the freedom of the press. That's the view of one journalist from a leading liberal left-wing newspaper which defends pro-European viewpoints. I'm worried about my freedom as a journalist. Recently, journalists were thrown out of the Polish parliament. Access was partly restricted for us. It becomes more difficult to do our job. Press freedom is limited now. I don't know what will happen next, if it will become even worse. We're worried about our future. The massive protests are on the front page of the other opposition newspapers, but are not as prominent and their impact played down by the media supporting the ruling right-wingers. Polish society is split. What are the reasons for that? Let's search for answers. The governing populace took direct control of public media, sending Poland crashing in the World Press Freedom Index to 47. Will pro-government forces take over control of private media too? The government plans to limit foreign capital participation. The strategy is called repolonization. Ahead of upcoming local elections, this could reshuffle the ownership of local media. The president of the Polish Journalists Association, a manager of a right-wing radio station, defends the draft law. When Poland joined the free market after the fall of communism, we did so as a poor nation. Therefore, we got no or just a tiny share of the benefits, although we worked hard during the previous 27 years. The plan of Finance Minister Morawiecki is going to change that, which is the central idea behind the limitations on foreign capital and the repolonization of the media. But the Polish-owned private media is under attack as well. A new law could break up the multimedia group Agora. Gazeta Wyborczka is part of it. The planned legislation could put at risk its economic viability. On top of that, public institutions have removed funding from the daily and it has reduced staff numbers. Almost 200 have left. The deputy editor-in-chief criticizes the government for endangering the success story of Poland's pro-European transformation process. All the changes of these last years of transformation are perceived by this government as a conspiracy of the elite of the post-solidarity and communist eras. Gazeta Wyborska, a symbol of this change, has been directly targeted. The government and all state-owned companies have stopped advertising in Gazeta Wyborska. We are the target of this government's hatred. Russia, Turkey, Hungary, Poland all share similarities when it comes to a crackdown on press freedom. The private media faces economic pressures. For public media, pressure comes through direct control. The government fired 250 journalists from the public media, just like that. We haven't had a purge like that since martial law. This is the return of the propaganda from the time of the communists, but in reverse. The populist government doesn't tolerate the slightest criticism. When Poland joined the European Union in 2004, it entered an economic growth path. But the right-wing populists gathered support by telling an alternative story about Poland in ruins, populated by economic losers. Let's check some facts in Krepa, a tiny village and home to Sylvester. When he took over from his grandfather 20 years ago, this was a small-scale dairy farm, typical for rural Poland in the 90s. Sylvester started with eight cars. Today he owns 500. So how did he manage to build up his stock? Sylvester is a man of courage. Seeing upcoming EU membership, he decided to modernize. Before joining the European Union, many Poles were afraid that the country's agriculture, with mostly small-scale family farms, would collapse. Not so Sylvester, and he was right. Actually, those fears were unfounded. Thanks to EU-financed rural development and farm modernization schemes, those farmers who wanted to develop got the chance to do so. The milk is transformed to powder and sold around the globe, China, New Zealand, South Africa. Sylvester knows EU trade agreements enable him to enter markets abroad. 
When I was a young farmer, all those European Union support programs were really great for me. They enabled me to go further, to grow and to make my professional dream come true. I used all of those European funding schemes I was entitled to, every single one. Solidarity, that's one of the key principles of the European Union. Poland is by far the biggest recipient of EU funds, receiving three times the amount it contributes. Back to Warsaw and an appointment with the president of a leading Polish think tank, the Institute of Public Affairs. His research shows Poles trust the European Parliament and Commission more than Polish institutions. Poles still like the EU. It's a friendship based on values, not just on money. Membership of the EU was the best guarantee, was seen as the guarantee and still is seen as the best guarantee uh, that we will remain part of the Western community of free nations and not a Russian satellite. So that was, that was the first and I think it's still the key motive for uh, supporting European membership in, in this country. The European Union is the only chance we have for peace, stability and economic prosperity in the globalised world. The talk of a multi-speed Europe has intensified. Some Western leaders see the way forward for the EU as fostering closer cooperation among the willing and leaving the reluctant behind. It's up to Poland to choose between the two.